I'm PJ Matavish. Welcome back to another DCG tutorial. This question you saw there is 2015 uh, section C, question C3 question. It is uh, surface geometry. So uh, in previous videos, I've read over the question, but at this stage here, you have the question in front of you, you can read it yourselves. So we're gonna kick straight into part A of the question. Because it has drawn the given plan elevation of the structure. So we'll start off with that and I'll fast forward through it and we'll see you at the end of that. Okay, so that is the elevation plan done. And that's part A. So draw a given plan elevation of the structure with points Q, P, and surfaces A, B, and C labeled. So part B, determine the heater angle between the surfaces A and B. So this is your surface A in elevation, and this is A in plan. Then that surface B, this is your line in section, and this is it up here in elevation. So what we need to do is <coughs> figure out if it's a true length in either view, and it's not, because it's not parallel to X, Y line. Therefore, we must do um, two auxiliary views. First one is going to be perpendicular to the line and section in order to get a true length of that line. And once we have a true length of it, we can do a second auxiliary view and find the dehedral angle. So I'm going to project an auxiliary elevation from the plan. This is my line section here, so I'm going to go perpendicular to that edge up here to the right hand side. And let's see. Perfect, yeah, we have. It's the same angle as the edge of the surface or edge of the structure. So we have a setup ready with our adjustments, that's correct. So project it all out here, get your height from the X, Y line up to the elevation and put in the X1, Y1 and mark it up. So that's our auxiliary elevation of the surfaces A and B, and they're behind each other because they're, you're looking directly in here, so therefore it's the surface A and B. And put a label in there to indicate our point, so the line section is the line 02, which is line 02 here. So now we can project our second auxiliary view, because this now is a true length. So we can project up or down, it doesn't matter. Um, I have more room here, but I think I'll fit it up at the top there. So I'm gonna project up my second auxiliary view parallel to the true length here, parallel to the line of section, and get my distances from the X1, Y1 back. Obviously you put in a datum line here at the edge just to save a bit of room. Now, that is your second auxiliary done, and that second auxiliary gives you a point view of the line section, so that's the point view here. Then that gives you an edge view of surface B, and then edge view here, surface A, giving you the dihedral angle. Okay, so that was part B. Now, part C, draw the true shape of surface C, and hence determine the radius, the largest circle that can uh, be contained within the surface. So to find the true shape of surface C, <clears throat> Looking at the question, we have, it's an edge view here in, in plan, therefore this is a true height. It's not tilted back and so on. And there are true lengths here. So what we could do is rotate the edge here. So this edge Q to 1, sort of Q, 1 and 2 are your points on surface C. You could rotate that out to be parallel to X, Y line, swing it back up here to elevation and draw it in there. But that's sitting over our auxiliary view. If you look here, this is an auxiliary elevation. And that's giving you the true height there. See, points Q, 1, and 2, i.e. the points on surface C. This is the true height of surface C. That's the true width. So if we rotate point 2 down to be parallel to the XY line, that means surface C is parallel to XY line, and project that point down and find a true shape down here in our plan. Okay, so rotate point 2 around to the point 2 down to the X1, Y1, and project back to your plan.
Okay, so just putting that true shape there with green, just so it stands out. And the next section of that was to find the largest possible circle that could fit, or that could be contained within the surface. So we already have one centre line, so bisect the angle here, or the other side, by the door, and where it cuts the centre line, should give you the centre point for the largest possible uh, circle. Okay, so by bisecting one of the angles, it'll give you a centre line, and you already have a centre line there. Now my initial circle is slightly off, that's probably due to my lead or so on, okay? So just, it has to be tangential to all three surfaces. Okay, and that's part C. Now part D is to determine the pitch of surface A. And then the second part of that. So we do, obviously, part one first. So to determine the pitch of surface A, we need to determine the angle surface A makes with our horizontal plane here, with our X, Y line. So as we're looking at surface A, there is no true length on that surface. Every one of these edges is off at an angle. So what we need to do is do a cut surface across. So this is point, actually that point two should be in point B the whole time, but it doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is do a cut section across the surface, put a line across the surface here, a straight line, parallel to X, Y line, and find that line in plan. Because if it's parallel to the XY line in elevation, it will be a true length in plan. And if it's a true length plan, we do an edge view of the surface A and figure out the angle it makes. So if we put a cut across from point P here, just it just has to be from one of the points. Where it crosses the Q0 line there, I'm going to project that down to plan. here and join that back to two and you can see there this yellow line here oh, that's a bit messy there is parallel to the XY line in elevation so therefore this must be a true length and if it's true length we can do an edge view a point view sorry point view of that line and get an auxiliary view and see the surface a as a line as an edge view So if we project our surface A, so that's points zero and point P there, which is I labeled point two and point Q, put in an X1, Y1. And we're projecting from the plan, so that means we have to get our heights from the elevation. So get all your heights from the elevation surface A and mark in that issue. So what we have there now is we have a point view of this line here, point P. That's the point view of it. We've given us an edge view of surface A, and then we can find the pitch of it. This is the pitch inside here. Okay, so that's the pitch of the roof, or the pitch of that surface A. That's an edge view of it. This is your horizontal plane, your X, Y line, and that's the angle that surface A makes with it. Now the second part of that question, it's telling us that a lightning conductor uh, or a lightning conductor is to be fitted to the building. The conductor cable uh, is to run from apex of the building along the outer edges of surface A through point P and down to the ground at Q. Determine indicating meters the minimum length of the cable required. So what they're saying is they're putting in a lightning rod here and a lightning conductor and the cable for it is running along the edges of surface A and it very specifically told you through point B rather than going straight down to Q so it's going from point zero to point P and then from point P down to point Q okay so in order to do that we need to find out the true length of the line zero to P and P to Q and looking at the reason it's part two of this question is because if we do a second auxiliary of this edge view here of A so this edge view here of A is going to give you true heights, 
If we project a second auxiliary in this direction, we can do a true length or true shape of surface A. And if we get a true shape of surface A, that will obviously give us the true length of the edges. So what I want you to do now is, what we have to do now is project uh, perpendicular to that edge view. So project perpendicular in this direction and get your distances from the X1, Y1 back to plan because that's the view for this one. So that's a true shape of surface A. Therefore, the distance from Q to P is a true length, and distance from P to um, point zero there is a true length. So it's running from zero to P, and then P down to Q. So as I said, determine and indicate. So not only do we have to show it here, but we also have to indicate it. So we could measure this distance, mark it down there, measure this distance, and indicate it as well. But to get the tr full length of it, I'm just going to extend this edge here and get a straight line. I'm going to rotate point zero down. So that is our full length and now I can indicate so it's in indicating meters so I'm getting 112 millimeters which means I need to multiply by 200 for the scale and that's giving me 22,400 millimeters. So that's giving me a distance of 22.4 meters. Okay, so that is the question done. Just gonna apply a small bit of shading just so uh, some of the surfaces stand out. Okay, so that's the question done. Uh, so, as always, I hope that helped. And this wasn't a request, but um, another structural form question was requested, or sorry, surface jump question was requested, so I said to do another one. And that's about it. So, see you in the next one.